Hello everybody, so uh, moving on from the uh, backgammon pieces last week, um, looking to find a red coloured metal, um, so I thought I'd give a couple of metals a, a try out, going to make a single ingot of each, each one of them, just have a look at the coloration, and if they're a bit too bright then we'll just go for regular copper. Uh, this particular metal I'm going to make this week is Red Tombac of Vienna. Uh, red Tombac is actually a brass, it's an alpha brass, it's 97.8% copper and 2.2% zinc. So I have here 26 grams of zinc and 1182 grams of copper. Tombac really just means a high copper alloy of, of copper and zinc. Anything up, usually up to sort of 20% 20, 20 zinc, often, you know, often a bit lower. Sometimes contains other metals as well, like uh, arsenic, tin and lead. And it's been used for coins, medals, um, ornaments and cheap jewellery and, and that kind of thing. Um, it was also used for the 1980 Summer Olympics bronze medals. Um, it was also used in, during the Second World War in 1942 and 1943 and it was used for the Canadian five cent pieces. There's a couple of other tombacks that I'm gonna to make. Uh, I'm gonna make red tombac of Paris, which is 90% uh, copper, 80%, uh, sorry, 8% zinc and 2% lead. So I'm hoping the lead um, will, will change the coloration slightly and perhaps darken up the metal into something usable for the backgammon set. There's another type of tombac called Imperial Russian Tombac. I can't find a recipe for it anywhere. It looks like a really nice metal. So if anybody does know the recipe for it, then I'd be really grateful to find out um, exactly what's in it. I've looked it up in this book here, which is the Waldman's Book of Engineering Alloys, and also can't, can't find a recipe for it in there either. I found uh, three or four recipes for Tombac. Had a bit of a result, jumped on eBay, this book's normally about £150 and I managed to pick it up for £2.95 including postage. So a bit of a result there and in it it contains pretty much every alloy known. Um, this is the fourth edition, I think we're up to the ninth edition now but if you could think of it it's probably in here. So uh, very very useful book, it's got all the percentages of all the metals, you can just look it up in the index and then refer back and uh, you can find the, all about the metal hardness and, and all sorts. Um, but yeah, very, very, very useful book, Waldman's Engineering Alloy. So if you can find yourself a copy of that, then uh, well, well worth it. So both of these ingots, I'm gonna make, um, well, both of, both of these melts, um, I'm really just making enough metal to make a single ingot. I'm just gonna polish it up, like I say, and have a look at the color. So uh, let's crack on with the first melt. While I'm doing this, I'll get the next one ready and I'll probably release this in two short videos. Um, the last couple of videos have been quite long. So uh, I think we could all do with a couple of, couple of short ones. In terms of adding the zinc to the copper, um, I'm sure you probably saw from the last couple of videos that I've had a bit of a nightmare uh, adding the zinc to the copper or the copper to the zinc or doesn't matter whichever way I seem to do it, I seem to get some kind of, well, I seem to get bucket loads of smoke and filling up the workshop with smoke. Obviously, as some of you mentioned, um, I should melt the zinc first and then dissolve the copper into the zinc. Well, obviously that's not gonna happen. Uh, but what I did notice from the last melt, that when I added a small amount of zinc to the copper with a flux layer over the top, um, nothing, no smoke was released until I added the big ingot. Once I added the big ingot, then it all went, it all went pear-shaped from there. So I'm hoping I can just add this very, very small amount, add it to the copper without too much of an issue, quick stir and pour. So there's the crucible from last time. Bit of a, bit of a mess, but uh, it's been cleaned, it's been brushed.
There we go. 1182 grams of copper. A little bit of cardboard in the furnace. Stop the crucible from sticking. Going to be running at a gas pressure of 1.2 bar, which is 17.4 psi.
Yeah. Should have given it a bit more heat. Last little bit solidified in the bottom of the crucible. I don't know if you can see that. Bit of a shame. Still. It's only for the colour. It's an ugly ingot. It's a clean up all right. To be honest, it just looks like copper, doesn't it? Still. Let's give it a quick clean, see what we got. All right, don't think I hit record somewhere along the line, so I'm not exactly sure what I've missed. Um, that's a little ingot I've just poured. Lovely little ingot, really clean. It's always the little one that comes out like that, isn't it? Still, never mind. This is the other one. It's had a very quick wire brush, literally two minutes on a wire brush. Um, it's a salmon, salmon pink colour. Probably not the kind of colour I want for my backgammon board and you can see where it's poured way too cold and it's just all it's done is just layered up so I'll give us a sand down try and get the worst of these marks off although I still think it's gonna look pretty rough looks like there's a little bit of zinc in there so it may not have mixed particularly well um, gather ingot may look a a little bit nicer so I'll wire brush that we'll have a quick look and then we'll try the next one and hopefully the inclusion of a little bit of lead on the next one will give us a much darker colour but obviously I don't know because I haven't tried it so we'll see alright so that's the small one it's just gone on a wire wheel a couple of minutes same again obviously just a nice salmon color doesn't look too much different to copper it is a bit bit lighter but 